It opens. Four friends, Susie, Sean, Justin, and Tantana, uh, are driving across the desert in a 50-year-old car Sean had rebuilt from high school and still hangs on to all these years later. Um, they're on a stand-up comedy tour, Quad State. Susie had introduced Tantana to the group uh, and was surprised and happy when Justin and Tantana hit it off. So the four musketeers were now driving across the desert in Sean's car. The Red Rocket on a Quad State tour. Uh, they were headed out to the comedy festival in Las Vegas, but were taking the long way around. Susie was driving and thinking about the night she had met Sean and Justin six months earlier in Pablito's Comedy Center in L.A., and how right off the bat they had made her feel part of the scene and that L.A. stand-up. Just as Tantana had made Susie feel part of another scene, a more wild and liberated scene of underground stand-up. So now they were on a Quad State comedy tour, ending up at the comedy... Uh, festival in Las Vegas when just outside of Vegas there was this incredible sky show um, two ships battling it out on the skies above them so Susie pulled over and they all jumped out of the car to take it all in outside of their car they were cleaned up language freaking out watching the two spaceships battling it out above their heads when suddenly one of the ships missed a maneuver and the other one got away, while the ship that stayed around hovered above the group. Suddenly, they're surrounded by light. No longer the ship, no longer in the ship. No, 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 no. They were surrounded by light. Um, they assumed they were in the ship. A hologram space alien is talking to them. Hello, he said. I have pursued a wanted criminal to your planet. His ship is damaged, so he's not going anywhere off planet. And he needs to feed. So I believe he'll be hiding out in that city over the hill. My drone ship is a cyberkinetic being, and I took a big gamble send, sending it into your atmosphere. If, if I were to pursue him in physical form upon your planet, the gods of your world would know it in an instant. And it would mean war between our peoples. So I have two choices. Either destroy the planet and cover my tracks as best I can. And just hope for the best. Or I could deputize the four of you to go after the criminal. Uh, the rings that are now um, on your hands will allow you to communicate with each other and with the ship. And when you find the alien, all you have to do is touch the ring to the crystal you each now wear around your necks, and it will do the rest. It's a mobile jail, and it will immobilize the alien until it is picked up by the drone ship to be transported back to my ship. The crystals will give you limited body armor, uh, and the rings will give you weapons capability. The only way this planet comes out of this encounter in one piece is if you agree to be deputized. Well, said Susie, wouldn't the gods of our world be mad? Yes, if they noticed, but you are vibrational beings. But they are vibrational beings. They are known uh, as the Zutek, and they have long since migrated to your son, the center of their empire. And yet their connection to this world, as the place of their birth, means that they keep an interest in it. But their real, last real connection to this world was with the race that preceded yours, that you called the Titans. They were the members of the Zytek race that refused to ascend. With the others, they were, they were the Zyteks that stayed behind upon the mountain of ascension, upon the mountain between worlds, the mountain of ascension where uh, they could rule this world forever while enjoying the pleasures of both worlds. But sadly, they fell in a 
a war long ago with the oracles, the half-breed children. What is left is the world that the vibrational beings barely notice the earth uh, any longer. There is no reason to. In a race of humans, it barely remembers or prays to their old gods, but still I am trespassing. And even if it is the strangest planet with life on it that I have ever visited, they still hold title to it, and I am sure if their attention were to be drawn to the earth, there would be hell to pay. You see, where I come from, the gods of my world, long ago left behind, were long, um, who long ago were left behind uh, when, when, the, when their people transitioned to vibrational beings uh, that dwell there still upon our mountain between worlds, ruling our world to this day through their children, the oracles, the half-breed children, the oracles. These beings on our world are also called titans, and they live on the mountain between worlds, like your Mount Olympus, where they drink from the water of eternal life. Only on my planet, all of their half-breed children are still to this day blinded at birth, so that they cannot challenge the titans like they did on your world. In the oracle's second sight, their ability to sense the vibrations of people and objects serve as a sona that allows them to navigate through this world. The titan's half-breed children are brought to the mountain between worlds and allowed to drink from its waters. That allows them to live for 2,000 years, but they must drink from it every 2,000 years or else will grow old and die. Uh, and this system still exists to this day on my world, but on yours, they did not blind the half-breed children at birth. So eventually, the oracles on your world, led by Zeus, joined together and overthrew the Titans. But in overthrowing them, the mountain between worlds was destroyed or else somehow moved beyond their reach, and so unable to drink from the waters of eternal life, the oracles grew out old and died. And since then, due to the mixing and matching of genes, every once in a while a new titan or oracle will be born upon your planet. But because they cannot drink from the spring that flows on the top of the mountain between worlds, titans born after the great calamity live for 2,000 years and then grow old and die, while oracles only live for decades, not centuries, and then grow old and die. You mean I'll live for 2,000 years, asked Susie? Well, just like humans have a lifespan of 100 years, you will have a lifespan of 2,000 years, and it could be considerably longer if you drink from the well of the spring of eternal life. What? asked Susie curiously, said the alien. There are many mountains between worlds in this solar system that we have identified. I am surprised that a titan born of this world does not simply will himself to the mountain top and drink of its waters. So in return for your assistance, I will give you the location of the mountain between worlds that sits on Mars. What good would that do us? asked Justin. Not you, said the alien, her. WTF? screamed Susie. After the drone ship delivers my prisoner to me, I will send it back for you and your friends, and it will transport you to the mountain between worlds on Mars. But, said Susie, you said that I have the ability to do that for myself, so how is that a reward? Well, you have the ability within you. But since none of the Titans born of man since the great calamity have done so yet. I am assuming that something must be blocking you. But on Mars, I would be alone. No, said the alien. From there you would be able to rebuild the mountain between worlds back here on Earth, and then simply will yourself home. So after taking it over, talking it over amongst themselves, they agreed to help the alien and so that it can assist you in capturing the escaped prisoner, said the alien, the ship has transformed itself into the red rocket, and it will speak to you through my voice and image. As long as you are wearing the ring, 
and will speak to you as if you were standing as if I were standing next to you. And your car has been miniaturized and placed in the ship's glove compartment. So when this is over and you want your car back, the ship will take it out, place it on the ground, and gravity will do the rest. What the group asked in unison? It will unpack the condensed molecules and you'll have your car back. Oh. Until then, consider this ship your red rocket. Won't the gods of our planet detect us if we use the ship? No, it does not monitor non-life forms like the ship. It, it only monitors life forms that it considers threats. Drone technology is probably too primitive a technology for them to even track it. So they headed off in the alien red rocket towards the big city. Susie, the grownest, thought back to when it all began, the first time she had met Sean and Justin. Sean and Justin Perez were two long-in-the-tooth L.A. stand-ups, as well as best friends, since the 10th grade, standing at the bar waiting to go on, and as best friends they were tearing into each other, unmercifully. Until sitting next to him at the bar, Susie Negronis, totally new to the scene, said to them, All right, already. It's time you two get a room. What? They both said. In unison, we're straight. What? Said Susie. Nobody's straight in L.A. Besides, you two are vicious. What are you then? Best friends? Yes. And I thought about living... And she thought about living for 2,000 years or even till infinity. About how... Many other Sean's, and, and, and just how many other Sean's, Justin's, and Tatiana's she would know along the way. <sighs> her mind was just thinking so fast. Was immortality something that she even wanted? They, <clears throat> they checked into their motel rooms and got ready for the night's performance at the comedy festival. The ship was monitoring for the alien. The ship said that the alien hunts during the day. Its ship will probably transform into a bus, fill up with passengers, and then disappear around a corner and have lunch. And when the alien is distracted, like when it's feeding, he can be tracked. That night at the club, after her set, Susie got a production deal offer from Netflix to turn one of her characters, the trashy aunt, in her tales of misadventure across Europe with her niece, three years her junior, who keeps a journal of their misadventures that she reads to the audience. Um, a different country every night, and uh, it's basically stream of thought. In a TV series called The Trash Yant, uh, based upon her skit called The Trash Yant, the next morning, they found the criminal alien feeding upon a bus full of passengers, just like the bounty hunter had assumed they would. The bus took a direct hit, so we knew the ship wasn't going anywhere. So the criminal alien made a run for it, and we all got to use our weapons as we reduced the alien to slime, which did not mean he was dead. Sean touched his, his ring to the crystal, and it turned into a mobile jail, and inside it, we could see the alien, and he was hopping mad. Then we saw Sean's red rocket on the ground as uh, it slowly grew back in his size. Then the alien red rocket took off with the mobile jail uh, while we got into the red rocket and handed, headed back to the motel room to pack. The mountain between worlds appeared before them surrounded by a rainbow. And they left the alien red rocket and walked through several layers of the rainbow. When a great explosion occurred in the skies above their heads, and the alien red rocket shook, rattled, and then sat silent. The drone ship red rocket dissolved into mush as the jet pulled up, and, a, and the group was welcomed in. Hello, and welcome. I am... Ji Jang Suk, may I be of service, said a well-dressed man. What's going on, they all wanted to know. Covert operation was waged against um, the, the Zutek Corporation by an unknown consortium 
a sort of hostile takeover, if you will, but it has since been squashed. We observed the Cyberdrome enter your system and engage you, and we decided to let it play out. We have now acted, eliminating the threat. Am I really a titan, asked Susie. No, you are not, said the well-dressed man. Then he turned to Tatana, two spirits, and said, I serve at your pleasure, madame. What, they all shrieked. We needed them to think that Susie, the oracle, was the titan, and not you. For your safety, madam, if you had worn the ring and walked through the defenses of the mountain between worlds, it would have been very costly to us. That is why they had to believe that Susie, the oracle, was the titan, and not you. And well, he said, there is now plenty of time to catch you up on this, madam. So for now, the world is your oyster. Where would you like to go? Susie, John, Jason, and Tatana looked at each other. Pablito's for last call, said Tantana. Pablito's for last call, they all answered. And they were off to the races.